Good morning, boys and girls of the internet. So we're over here with the Hummer H3 again. We've got the transmission back from the rebuilders for the third time, second time. And uh, we're about to stab this bad boy in. So the TV's okay, you can keep listening. What are you working on over there? That's your what, $200 Durango? $200 Durango, we're hoping we can fix it. It's got a little rattle in it. It's not like a metallic rattle, like a rod bearing or anything. It runs good, it's just got a little clickety clickety in the top end. The dad's over there gonna try to figure it out because he's gonna let me drive the Durango, right? I like those Durangos. I just, I'm not a big fan of the 4.7, but his 4.7 in that Jeep Grand Cherokee has been absolutely damn near bulletproof. And so maybe if we could just figure out how to do the guides and chains and all of them, you can have reliable 4.7s, who knows? Yeah, he just drove his five and a half hours one way. Didn't miss a beat, but even with a wrecked front end. But something that is missing a beat is this poor bummer H3. Like I said, we just got the transmission back for the second time from the rebuilders. Uh, hopefully this one works. The last one made it about 29 miles and the transmission would not go into, or the torque converter would not lock up. Um, and I was having, it was a hard shift in the drive. Uh, it didn't really slip, but like I said, I had no torque converter lockups on the highway. It, 65 mile an hour, she was turning some RPMs. Uh, pulled the trans pan down to check the fluid and the wiring harness inside the transmission. It was full of metal, just looked horrible. So it's back, we have pulled it back down here into its spot. It was sitting up here in its little hole and I rolled it down and I'm about to start stabbing this thing in. Looks like there's a truck pulling up. GMT 800. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, well, guess we'll figure that one out. That's the truck that was leaking peanut butter. I'll explain that later. But let's get this thing up in the air and get ready to stab this new transmission in. So we gotta go get transmission fluid. Cause I forgot to get some. Lock the Acura. You lock the door. Yeah. I got my keys. I got mine. I just make sure we lock it. So we will go down to the auto zone in style. We gotta get you a seat in here. Yes, we do. Contact. Yeah, pull it oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll now. Riding along in my automobile. All right, so we are back from the parts house and uh, we got the Valvoline Max Life Full Synthetic, also known as to Totalmente Sintetico, Sintetico, whatever that is. So there's our ATF and I uh, got this thing up in the air for the second time. I had it up here a minute ago and then I realized that I forgot to get my box of bolts, my gear shifter selector switch, the, the Cadillac Convoita, and then over here we've got our brand new Tran emission and our pan gasket, which doesn't look like the right pan gasket. This wants to be done, I don't know. I guess I'll find out. It just right now looking at it does not look like the right pan gasket, but we'll find out. It's supposed to be. Eh, we'll figure it out. And so yeah, let's go put this in this car for the second time. Third time third second second time. Oy vey. Okay, so after a joy ride around the mother freaking county, I had to find an ATP 
S035 dipstick tube seal because they fucked up and didn't put me one in this new transmission. They did the first time they built it, but they sure as hell didn't do it this time. So, now it's in there. Got it all up into place. I'm starting with my bell housing bolts. Got the torque converter in, pre-filled the torque converter. Went ahead and installed the dipstick tube and the new seal because it's really easy on these to line them up as it goes back in. And you gotta fight these stupid designed torque converter bolts that just, oh, wish they wouldn't have done that. But anyway, so she is sitting in here now. I'm about to throw some more bolts in it and then pull the trans jack out of the way. And then we'll continue on this bummer. All right, so taking back in, I got the transmission all bolted up, the housing bolts, brackets, all that good stuff. The three pain in the butt torque converter bolts are in there because you can't go through there and you can't go through the starter hole. You got to go through that little slot right there. And for reference, here's my fat gobby hand going up in there. Transfer cases in, new gaskets between them up here. It's all mated together, the new filter in the trans and the gaskets on the trans cooler lines are in their quick connect fittings with new snap rings on them exhaust is hooked up at the front exhaust is hooked up at the back with new bolts now all i gotta do is put the bluetooth drive shafts in front and rear right there put my cross member back on fill it full of fluid fire this turd up Put the full drive actuator on it i just realized then we can fire this bad boy up and see what works and what doesn't so hopefully we're about done mcdaniel all right so everything is put back in here now bolted up clip tied snip wired everything but the rear drive shaft and then we'll pour some ATF in it. I got the little thing on the back. I still got to put this little bolt up here then that holds to keep the motor from shaking around and breaking the plastic tabs off. But besides that, we're about ready to fire it up and see what happens. All right. So the, it only does that skipping when you first crank it and then it goes away. It's done that for years. It keeps getting random timing codes after rebuilding the motor. And, dug into a lot of things on another note guys we are in the bummer this is the initial test drive so far it seems like everything's okay knock on wood i'm following transmission data Ooh, look at that drop top anyway uh i'm following all the trans data as we go uh, our complaint the first time after installing the new transmission was the torque converter would not gauge its lockup sequence which is where it makes it like a one-to-one -one and it acts like a double overdrive. Uh, so instead of the clutch just, or the torque converter slipping, which is what it's supposed to do, you know, as you rev and accelerate, it would lock the torque converter together where it didn't slip anymore. It was a, like a direct drive. Uh, that part was not working. I also noticed that the new torque converter they sent with the transmission this time is significantly smaller. I mean, it's tiny by comparison to the one that they had me shove in there the first time, which did work, but here's your sign. So here we are, it said uh, TCC enabled no, 40 mile an hour, and we should notice it somewhere around the 55 probably more. Well, now we're at 50, I'm still in the throttle. and TCC is enabled so if I ease onto the throttle oh yeah there it goes oh yeah I'd say it's working now finally good Okay, so we just took her down the highway, had it up to 70 and some change. Smooth as can be, torque converter is engaging, all gears are changing, line pressures look great, everything's fine. No warning lights, no weird noises. 
So let's go back to the shop, check over all of our fluids again, and get this thing ready to go the fuck back home. I'm tired of looking at it. And then I get my Ford Escape back, so that's even better. Finally, it's done.